Welcome to E3 Rehab. I'm Dr. Tony Camella, and today we have a fantastic video for you, breaking down some of the best exercises that you should be doing for your rotator cuff. You've probably heard about the rotator cuff before, and maybe have even done some exercises for it. It is commonly prescribed in rehab for various pathologies and following surgery, as well as in the fitness community for general shoulder health. But what exercises are best? Are there ones that are more effective? How many reps and sets should you be doing? And should you be worried about activating other muscles, like the deltoids, during these exercises? We're gonna answer all those questions for you in today's video. And as a spoiler, while you might be familiar with some of these exercises, there will be a couple that might surprise you. But before we get into that, let's break down exactly what the rotator cuff is. The rotator cuff is in reference to four muscles, which originate around our scapula or shoulder blade and attach to our humerus or upper arm. These are the subscapularis, infraspinatus, supraspinatus, and teres minor. Together, they are responsible for protecting and providing dynamic stability to the shoulder joint, while individually, they each have their own role. The subscapularis is primarily responsible for internal rotation of the shoulder. Infraspinatus and teres minor are primarily responsible for external rotation of the shoulder. And the supraspinatus mostly helps control the shoulder joint during abduction, but can also assist in external rotation. While these muscles are associated with rotation-based movement, they're actually activated quite well in other shoulder movements as well. And we will cover that in a bit. So now let's get into the exercises. Let's kick it off with exercises that you guys are probably most familiar with activating our rotator cuff. Classic examples include external rotation variations, standing arm raises with weight, and exercises lying on your stomach and lifting the arm. But are some better than others? In 2004, Reinhold et al. found that infraspinatus and teres minor demonstrated highest activation during side-lying external rotation. Now this makes sense since as we talked about before, these muscles are responsible for this movement. However, the comparison in this study was to a standing dumbbell external rotation exercise. Although this variation goes through rotation, due to the pull of gravity, there's actually no tension on the rotator cuff, so it really just stresses our bicep. In short, this variation is really not worth performing if the goal is targeting our rotator cuff. In a study titled, which is the optimal exercise to strengthen the supraspinatus, researchers found that infraspinatus activity was similar in the prone Y, prone external rotation, and standing banded external rotation exercise. However, comparing these three, the banded external rotation was the one with the least posterior deltoid activation. In terms of supraspinatus activation, the exercises that typically are the most popular are the ones that move the shoulder through abduction, since the supraspinatus contributes towards this movement. However, in the previous study just mentioned, when comparing five exercises, the empty can, full can, prone Y, prone external rotation, and banded external rotation, all exercise positions activated the supraspinatus to equally high levels. In another study by Reinhold et al., they compared supraspinatus activation to deltoid activation during the empty and full can and prone Y exercise. They did find that all of these elicited similar supraspinatus activation, but the full can exercise did demonstrate the least posterior and middle deltoid activity of the three. As physical therapists, one of the common questions we get asked is does it matter if the deltoid is activated during these exercises? And like most questions that we get asked, the answer is it depends. There might be occasions where we preferentially want to target the rotator cuff over the deltoids. These are cases where the person might already have pretty strong deltoids, like a swimmer, baseball player, or someone who does a lot of volume of the deltoids at the gym. Other cases might include someone who is a little bit more sensitive to higher loads. This might be someone experiencing more pain or even someone just more recently out of shoulder surgery. In these cases, choosing the sideline external rotation or full can exercise might be better options since they have been shown to be more favorable for activating the rotator cuff over the deltoid muscles. But there will be cases where activating the deltoid might actually not matter that much. In these cases, the goal might be relatively simple 
and that's to build the overall tissue capacity of the shoulder and increase its tolerance to load for the desired activity. We recommend experimenting with different exercises and options and simply finding out what's comfortable for you. For most of these, performing two to four sets of 10 to 20 reps close to fatigue two to three times a week is a general recommendation. But for specific guidance, we always encourage you to seek out a reliable healthcare practitioner for individual needs. Now, as promised, we're gonna show you guys some options that you might not typically associate with rotator cuff exercises. These include strength training movements like lateral raises and overhead pressing. These not only elicit activation of the rotator cuff, but they move the shoulder through greater range of motion and help build strength around the scapula, arms, and trunk. With increasing loads, these have been shown to demonstrate increased activation of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus, as well as the serratus anterior, lower trap, and the deltoid muscles. Now, if you're someone experiencing front shoulder discomfort with these movements, we can make a temporary transition to more pulling exercises. These have less activation of our posterior rotator cuff, so the supraspinatus and infraspinatus, and therefore can be more tolerable on the shoulder. As a disclaimer, we do understand that EMG studies have their limitations. So we can also look towards studies that look at the torque generating capabilities of the various muscles of the shoulder. A systematic review titled The Moment Arms of Muscles Spanning the Glenner Humeral Joint does show similar results to the previously mentioned EMG studies. This chart looks at the maximum moment arms of various muscles and movements taken from various studies. The infraspinatus and teres minor have higher moment arms during axial rotation, just like the sideline external rotation exercise. And the supraspinatus during abduction and flexion, just like the full can and lateral raise exercises. So again, if the goal is preferential activation of certain rotator cuff muscles with minimal contribution from these other muscles, then this information can help guide our exercise selection. But we also wanna recommend that you don't ignore these compound movements like pressing and pulling or lateral raises either, simply because they activate other muscles. If the goal is to build up the tissue capacity of the shoulder, increase its tolerance for activities, or just build up a more robust system, then these exercises should be a strong consideration into your programming. All right, guys, that's all we got for you today. If you have any questions at all, or just have suggestions for future content, drop it in the comments below. You guys can help support us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. We will see you guys all next time. Peace.